Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you are all doing well. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you how I set up the brand new Sony a 7 IV for both photography and video. This is gonna be a full in-depth breakdown looking at the My Menu, the function menus, the custom keys for both photography and video. And so you guys can navigate around this video how you please because some of you might be only interested in the photography side of things, some of you might be only interested in the video side of things. I'm gonna hopefully leave time codes on the video itself. So if you wanna go and see how I set up the function menu for photography or video, you can jump to those parts of the video. Now, someone who works as a professional videographer and photographer, the Sony a 7 IV right here is an absolute beast of a camera to have. And I've set it up in a way that helps me be able to navigate through the menus very quickly. The function menus, the custom buttons are all set to ways that help me shoot and just focus on the creating rather than having to think about navigating through the menus all the time. Also, at the end of today's video, we are gonna be having a look for the hashtag CP photos. Now, if you're new here, the hashtag CP photos is something I use on Instagram where you guys can share with me the photography you are doing. And at the end of every video, I have a look through it to see what you guys are creating and share some of your work right here on the channel. It's also a great opportunity for you guys to meet other creatives, meet other people, follow other people, and just meet a part of this awesome community and interact with new people who also have a common interest with creating content photography. So yeah, go and use it, meet a community full of people. But with all that said and done, let's jump straight into this video because I feel like it's gonna be quite a long one. So the first thing we wanna do is get the camera on, jump into the menus, and we're gonna jump into the setup mode and find reset slash save settings. Now, once you've done the setup for your camera, what you can do is save it, and you'll have an option here to save a new and name it whatever you want. Now, you might have noticed if I go to load, I have one that's called CP a 7 That is the setup I'm gonna be showing you today. And this gets saved onto the memory card of the camera. So then you can take it off the memory card and put it on other cameras. So say for example, you're gonna be hiring out another two a 7 IVs. Instead of you like messing around with the menus and setting it up each time, you can just load this onto the camera and all your settings are gonna be exactly the same. Okay, so now I've saved that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into settings, reset, and initialize, and what this is gonna do is restore everything to default. There we go, it is now reset to default, but now all on the same page, and we can jump straight into things and start setting up this camera. So before we jump into setting up the menu system or anything like that, there are a few initial changes I like to make to the camera first. The first one is going to be in image quality, and we're just gonna to go to image quality settings, and here we can see that it's in a file format of JPEG, I'm gonna change this to raw. I don't shoot raw plus JPEG, that's just a personal choice of mine. I always end up just deleting the JPEG files anyway, so I just shoot raw. And then with the file type, I'm gonna change it from compressed to uncompressed raw. The reason I do this is it's gonna give me the maximum quality that this camera can give me. And also at the same time, it's gonna give me the most flexibility when it comes to post and editing my photography. So the next thing we wanna change is the video file format. So we wanna to switch to video right here so we have full flexibility of changing this in the menus. We're gonna to go to file format. Normally it's set to SHD. I'm gonna go up one and change it to S4K. Now the reason I don't use SI is you need a faster memory card with read and write speeds. Um, even here, it will tell me um, I need a faster memory card. And then the one above, the very top one, HS, has smaller file types. So for me, I always usually shoot with S, even with the Sony A7S III right here. I can shoot SI, but I choose to shoot S, because it has, uh, in terms of file size, it's like medium file size, but really good quality still. SI, I really can't see that much of a difference, but I never touch HS because it has smaller file sizes. Uh, and then from there, we're gonna go to movie settings and it's usually set at 60 megs, 4208 bit. We're gonna open that up a little bit and go to 140, 422, 10 bit. Glorious. Now you might also notice that my frame rate is set to like 25 or 50 and not 24 or 60. There is a reason for that and I'll go into that a little bit later on in today's video. But for now, I'm gonna set it to 25p. Right, I wanna switch back into photo mode, go back into the menus, and next one we're gonna be changing is long exposure 
uh, noise reduction. Basically, it will do noise reduction in camera if you're taking long exposure photography. I have this off because I do it in post, and not just that as well. It takes time for the camera to apply that noise reduction, by which point I've then potentially missed taking another long exposure photograph, so I just turn that off. The next thing I'm going to be changing is audio recording, and I'm going to turn off the wind noise reduction. Um, I just never have this on, and I don't always trust it. So I just leave it off so I have full control over the audio. And usually if I'm like in a windy situation, I'll just use a dead cat like this one right here. The next thing I'm going to change on this camera is you're going to absolutely love this. It's in the shooting display and it's called emphasized rec display. It's kind of hidden in the menus, but this thing is absolutely incredible. So when I press the record button, you can see it just has record and obviously it's counting up because it is recording video. However, if I turn this off, what it does is it creates a red border all the way around the screen. So I can clearly tell that I'm recording. And this is great if you're like shooting B-roll from a distance and you're like, did I press the record button? You can really see this and it is really emphasized to help you see if you are recording or not. I absolutely love it. I have it activated in the Sony a7S III and it has saved me in so many situations. I've just remembered as well, this camera has the annoying beep on. I mean, listen, we want to turn that off. I hate these sounds from Sony. Now they hide this really well in the menus because it seems like they never want you to turn it off, but it's in sound options and it's called audio signals. They should rename that to annoying our sound. And I just have that turned off. We're going to be changing two things within the power setting options. We've got auto power off temperature, which is set at standard. We're going to adjust this and change it to high. What this is going to do is it's going to prioritize record time over overheating. Now, I've never had any overheating problems with the Sony a7 IV, even shooting 4K 60 for long periods of time within high or standard. But it is, again, just one of those things you might have to be a little bit cautious of. And then the power save start time is the other thing we're gonna be changing here. I'm gonna change this from 10 seconds, basically the camera screen will turn off after 10 seconds of idleness to five minutes. The next thing we're gonna be changing is with the monitor. So currently the select finder monitor is select to auto. So if I put my eye to the camera, then it's gonna dis uh, display it through this viewfinder right here. If I take it away, it's gonna go onto the monitor right here. I hardly ever use the viewfinder on the camera anymore. Uh, mainly because when I shoot video, I have it on this one. And when I do POVs or photography, I always just use this display anyway, so you guys can see what I'm photographing. So for now, I just always leave it in um, monitor manual. The only time I really change this is if I'm doing like wedding photography or client shoots, then I will use this uh, viewfinder right here. Also gives over the impression that you look more professional rather than just being like this perception. This next option that we're going to be changing on the camera is a complete game changer. So do you know when you go into photography mode, you can switch the um, shutter speed like so, as you can see right now. Then I switch over the video mode and those settings stay the same. Now this can be a bit of a pain if you are, say for example, shooting a log mode and you want to switch quickly to photography mode. Your log mode and all your settings are going to be transferred over from those movie sh shooting settings you were in. What this option does here, different set for still slash MV filming movie, is it allows you to keep all of these settings independent. So what we're going to do is we're going to tick each and every one of these and then we're going to press OK. So now I'm within the photography mode. If I change my shutter speed, my aperture and change the ISO to a random number, then go over to video mode, the settings stay the same from when I was previously in video. That is a game changer. I absolutely love it and it helps me keep my settings independent from video to photography. That means if I need to quickly adjust and get a photograph or something, I can do that on the fly like that. I don't have to worry about adjusting anything else. It's all done for me. Next, we're gonna be going into peaking. Now, people have asked me in the past, how do I shoot with manual lenses and what are those red lines that I use for focusing? 
This is all peaking. And how I have it set up is I choose my peaking color, which is set to red. I always put it on high and then we're gonna turn it on. So if I'm ever shooting manually, I can see these red lines and I can see where my focus is. Now we're gonna be going into more detail about peaking and how I set it up a little bit later on the video, as well as other assists that help me when shooting manually for photography and video. The next thing we're gonna be changing is within the zoom option and we're gonna be changing the zoom range from optical zoom only to uh, digital zoom only. And I'm gonna show you how I set it up and why I set it up a little bit later on. Okay, so the final thing we wanna change within just the initial setup of the camera is the AF illuminator Turn it off. That is our initial setup done. Now let's jump in to the My Menu setup. Sony have done a really good job with improving their menu system within their camera, but because there are so many different settings, it is sometimes really difficult to navigate and find the thing you are looking for. So the My Menu setup comes in real handy. You get six folders, and instead of you having to dig through each and every folder to find that one thing you are looking for, we can organize them within these six folders. And what we're gonna be putting in here is the, the settings and the things I find myself adjusting most frequently and put it within these folders so it's easy and quick to access. So we're gonna go into the My Menu, Add Items, and the first thing we're gonna add is File Format for Video. We're gonna put this in folder number one. Right after that, we're gonna add in the movie settings, put it right underneath file format, and then we're gonna add S and Q modes. We're gonna put that right underneath the movie settings right there. Our next item we're gonna be adding within this menu is the lens compensation. We're gonna put that right underneath S and Q. Uh, for how I set up lens compensation is I've got it set up for auto and or. And then if breathing comp does come up as a highlighted option for like video shooting, I will sometimes turn that on because it crops into the image a little bit, but removes that breathing that you sometimes see at the top or the bottom of the screen, which happens with uh, some lenses. The next item we're gonna be adding is within the drive mode and it's the interval shoot function. Gonna put that right underneath lens compensation. I should probably make a different video entirely about uh, interval shoot function, but I actually haven't set it up on this camera yet because I haven't done many time lapses or any time lapses for that matter with this camera just yet. Uh, we're also gonna throw in here the new function that you find on the Sony a 7 and this is the focus map. It's something that I've used a little bit but haven't 100% like got behind yet. It's something I wanna play around a little bit more before I give my thoughts on it, but it's, it's a pretty cool feature to have and nice to have as a quick access within the menu. Final item we're gonna be adding within this first folder is the NTC slash PAL selector. Now the reason I have my NTC slash PAL selector within one of my menus is because it's something I change quite frequently depending on my shooting environment. If I'm shooting all external then it will be in NTSC because then I get 24 frames per second, I get 30 frames per second and I get 60 frames per second. However if I'm shooting in an interior location sometimes you'll find that the frame rate and the frequency of the light is not aligned. And what this creates is that flickering you see within video, also known as the strobe effect. So what you can do is go into PAL sector and change your frame rate so you're shooting at either 50 frames per second or 25 frames per second, and then you avoid any flickering within your video. For folder number two within our My Menu setup, we wanna switch from video mode to photography mode, and the first item we are gonna add is image quality settings. Now, I, as I said earlier, I shoot raw, uncompressed. I don't think I'll ever change that, but say, for example, I just need to shoot a quick JPEG image, I can quickly just adjust that right here on the fly. Next, we're gonna be adding is APS-C shooting. Now, I have another button program that I'll show you later on for this, but I'm just gonna add that right here underneath image quality. Uh, after that, we're gonna be adding in grid line display. This is awesome to have, actually. I use it for video quite a bit if I'm framing up for an interview or something like that. I could just turn this on, get my rule of thirds, bang on right, get the subject where I want them to be, and have the image perfectly composed within camera. The next thing we're gonna add within this is external flash settings. Now, I'm gonna add this in here even though I don't use a flash that often, but if I'm ever shooting a wedding or anything like that, I know it is a setting that I would probably want to have quite quickly, or if I'm ever doing a portrait shoot and I'm using a flash. So even though I don't use it now, I know it will be probably something I will use in the future. 
The next item is going to be for eye slash face subject. Um, if you don't know, this camera has eye and face tracking for animals and birds, as well as humans, of course. And honestly, I, I usually forget that this is even an option and it's so hidden within the menu that it is good to have a quick access point for it. And I've also got it programmed somewhere else, which I'll share with you a little bit later on in today's video. Uh, next, we're gonna quickly add in here focus magnifier right underneath face eye subject. And then we're also gonna be adding in peaking display on or off right there. And that is my menu two all set up and ready to go. Continuing setting up the menus, we're now gonna be jumping into menu three. The next thing we're gonna add in there is anti flicker settings. Uh, I don't think I'll use that that often, if at all, but it's good to have quick access to it if I want it, because it, I know it's a setting I may adjust in the future. Three of the next items we're gonna be adding within menu three are all on the operation customize. We're gonna be adding customize key for photography, video, and the F n menu settings we're next going to add in our save slash load settings that we went over at the beginning of the video we'll throw that in right there and then we're also going to uh, throw in there something called record with shutter uh, this is an option that i'm going to leave open and i'll explain a little bit later on in today's video when we're setting up the custom keys for the camera when it comes to video and the final item to add in menu three is going to be camera set memory and we're gonna throw that in right there. Lovely, jubbly. Within menu number four, the first couple of things we're gonna add is one of them is select finder slash monitor, which is the viewfinder and such and switching between them as I mentioned earlier. Put that right there. And then we're also gonna put in here within the same menu, uh, monitor brightness right there. Item number three is gonna be right above and it's gonna to be touch operation, which I'm also gonna put within menu number four. And the final item I'm gonna add within menu number four is airplane mode in case I'm ever on an airplane. Hopefully I'll be on one this year. Also, if you have airplane mode on as well, I think it saves battery. But honestly, the Sony a7 IV is so good with battery that it's something I don't even think about. Menu number five is going to be dedicated just for external output. So say, for example, I'm going to be shooting to an external monitor. All these settings are quick to access. So I haven't really done that with this camera as of yet. I have done it with the Sony a7 IV. But just for now, I'm going to add in HDMI resolution, HDMI output settings. And I'm also going to add in... HDMI info display, and that is menu number five all sorted. Now from menu number six, our final menu, there's only one thing I'm gonna add within here, and it is format. For me, I like to keep format all on its own in a separate folder where it's quick to access, but where I'm not gonna accidentally press it and activate it and completely format a memory card. So yeah, that's how I set up all six of my menus. Now, I'm not gonna claim that this is the best setup out of anybody's. Um, you can customize this how you like, but this is how I like it customized because I can find the settings I'm gonna use very easily. And it's very convenient for me as a photographer and video shooter to quickly access this menu and change the settings that I find myself frequently changing. So next we're gonna set up all the custom buttons for video. Now, if we go into my menu three, we'll see if you look at the video icon, you have custom key dial settings. We put that in earlier, so we have quick access to it. So now if we press it, we have access to all the custom buttons within this camera. So the first one is the AEL button, which stands for Auto Exposure Lock. I have never used that button, I think, ever. So we're gonna change this and have it toggle to a display option, which is called Gamma Display Assist Select. This is a setting that I use probably 99% of the time when shooting log modes. It is incredible. I could honestly hype up this one option on this camera for absolutely ages. It's something I use on the a7S III all the time, and it's so nice to see it make its way into this camera. Basically, what it does, say for example, you're shooting a log mode, you're shooting S-Log3. When you normally see it on your monitor, it looks super flat and boring. By having this option as a toggle on off switch, what you can do is you can turn on a conversion lock. Now this conversion lock isn't permanent. It doesn't embed itself within the file. It basically just shows you how it will look in post when you apply a Rec. 709 lock. 
and this has helped me in so many different shooting scenarios. I mean, I use it all the time because it helps me absolutely nail uh, my exposure in camera. I would recommend anybody shooting log mode use assist gamma display because it is one of the top tier, if not one of the best things Sony has inputted into these cameras. It is a massive asset and I make full use of it. The next custom button is the uh, AF on button. I never use this as well. Um, and if I'm shooting continuous autofocus, the AF is always on anyway. So I'm gonna switch this one to uh, focus hold, which is right here. And what this does is basically, if I am shooting, I just hold this down and I can uh, put my hand in front of it and it won't focus. But if I let go, it focuses on my hand. This is sometimes really helpful if I'm like putting an item down or something and I don't want it to switch focus. There's many different scenarios I have used this. Um, but yeah, I use that more than I would ever use the AF on. Our third customizable button is going to be the C1 button right here, which is normally um, assigned for white balance. We're gonna be changing that and put it on zoom. So now if I press this button right here and I use the scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out of my image, which really helps if I'm shooting with manual uh, focusing lenses or anything. And the funny thing is as well, if I press the record button, then press the C1 button, I can zoom in digitally whilst recording into this image. Now at this point, you're probably not gonna be getting 4K um, video, even though the file type comes up as 4K, but you do have 7K downsampled to 4K on the Sony A7 IV. So you actually could zoom into this image a little bit more if you needed to, but it's something I wouldn't really 100% recommend all the time. Only in a pinch if you really needed it. But it's a really cool option to have on, and it's something I use quite frequently to help with focus and things like that. Uh, custom button number four, uh, which is the C3 button right here, is normally assigned for focus mode. I'm gonna switch it to steady shot. Steady shot is something I actually use quite a bit on this camera. Usually it's set to standard, but if I needed that extra level of stability and I'm not using a gimbal, switching it to active is really useful sometimes, especially if I'm doing like handheld B-roll because yes, it crops into the image a little bit more, which um, can be a little bit annoying if you are like already in a crop mode at like 4K 50, but it does have its benefits. The next custom button we're gonna be changing is the dustbin icon. You can actually customize this button, which is pretty cool. And it is usually set to touch operation. Now I'm gonna change it to AF slash manual focus toggle. So now if I press it, I'm quickly jumping between being on auto focus to being in manual mode. This is great in so many different situations. As well, if you're filming B-roll of yourself and you don't wanna navigate through the menus, even the function menu, you can quickly just press this button and you're in manual focus. It has huge benefits and I use it a lot of the time. Also, I've just ordered myself a, a remote for the camera and it has a dustbin icon on it. So I can be at a distance from the camera, press that button and it will toggle manual focus on and off. The next custom buttons are on the rear two of the camera. The first one is this joystick one, which I have programmed for audio record level. The reason I have that is as I shoot a lot of interviews, I shoot people who have a lot of different like audio levels. Some people can be quieter, some people can be louder. So it's just quick to be able to adjust that on the fly. And when I'm listening back with headphones on, I can just program it and look at my audio levels and get it all spot on very quickly. And I can just adjust it on the fly if needed as well. So the next button we have assigned is this center button right here, which is normally not assigned to anything, but I have it assigned to focus magnification. So I can quickly just zoom into my image, which really helps if I'm trying to like nail focus with a manual focusing lens or I'm shooting through a reflection and I need to manually take control of the focus. But then earlier, you might remember we set up the C1 button to have digital zoom. So we can zoom in four times there and then we could press the uh, focus magnification to zoom in even further. So now we have like, what, 16 times zoom? Just look at it, how mad is that? How much I'm zoomed in to this image? That just doesn't seem right, that's crazy. The next button we're gonna customize is this left button here, which I've got set to peaking display select, so I can toggle peaking on and off. Now again, this is great if I'm shooting with manual focusing lenses, but I now have three things to help assist when shooting with manual lenses. So I have the digital zoom here, I then have the zoom magnification, and then I can toggle peaking on as well to really nail focus. 
Custom button number four is ISO. I don't change this. I love the positioning of it. Um, my shutter speed, aperture, and ISO buttons do not change. I keep them as standard for all my cameras. It's the way I've always shot, and I will never change that. Custom button number five is this down button, and I've got this customized to monitor brightness. So in a pinch, if I am shooting outdoors and I need to quickly switch the monitor brightness, I could just go down and switch it to sunny weather. Nice and convenient to have that there um yeah enough said what was your uncle the next customizable buttons are on top of the camera we have two here uh, one of them is the record button and the other one is the c2 button now remember earlier i mentioned rec um slash with shutter basically what that means is i could make this rec button right here this record button another customizable button if I turn the rec with shutter on, because then what it do is the camera would record if I press the shutter button. But for me, I don't like to change the record button positioning. I just like to keep that as the record button. But for people who would like another customizable button on top of their camera, that is always a way to go. So for the C2 button on top of the camera, I have this one set to my picture profile so I can quickly access them on the fly. My PP1 is set to S log free with a S gamut free dot cine. And the only other thing I change here is the detail, which I have set to minus seven because I can add that in post. With my PP2, I have that set to S Cine Tone. I haven't really played around with S Cine Tone. I think 99% of the time with this camera, I have just shot with S Log 3 because I really like how it looks and I'm able to push and pull it how I want to in post, but I might play around with different picture profiles in the future. But S Log 3 with the 422 10-bit from this camera, superb. Now the last custom button we have available to us, and this might not be available for everyone, but on a lot of Sigma and Sony G Master lenses, you get this button right here. And um, we can program this button for whatever we want. So for this case, what I've done with that button is I have programmed it to auto focus transition speed. So what this means, it will rack focus either faster or slower. I can change it from one to slow, or maybe seven to fast or have it in the middle at four. All right, so with all the custom buttons now set up for video, I'm gonna show you how I set up the function menu with the Sony a7 IV. All right, so what we can do here is go into the function menu settings and we can change them all for either photography or video. We're gonna go down to the one with the video icon. And the first one we're gonna change is this one right here, which is our picture profiles. Because I've got my picture profile set to the C2 button on top of the camera here, it's kind of counterintuitive to have them in the function menu as well. So I've decided to swap them out with grid line display, which is something I use quite frequently when I'm setting up interviews. And it's something I actually do use quite a bit to help with composition and framing. Next thing we're gonna swap out within this function menu is the peaking level so this is where you can change it from low medium to high I always set mine at high and leave it there and because some people might not have a lens which has a button on it I'm going to put here in here the AF transition speed now this is also helpful for me as well because say for example I'm shooting with a 50 mil lens this doesn't have one of those buttons on it so I know that having this in here will be beneficial at some point so I could quickly just change the AF transition speed and that's all the settings I change when it comes to the video function menu uh, I'm pretty satisfied what everything else is but of course people might choose to set it up differently I just know that this works really well for me and it means that the settings I need quick access to are all right there in the function menu okay and that means everything in terms of video is now set up with the Sony a7 IV. You can now go out and create some absolute masterpieces, short film, music videos with this absolute beast. But yeah, now let's jump into the photography side of things and let's start with the custom buttons. All right, so let's jump back into my menu and go to menu three and we'll see custom keys with the photo icon. First start and now we'll start adjusting so many custom buttons for photography. So the first button I'm gonna change again is the AEL button. I don't even use auto exposure lock for photography either. Um, so I'm gonna switch this to silent mode so I can switch from being in mechanical mode. You might be able to see it in here. And now if I press this button right here, the AEL button, I'm now shooting silently. Really nice and convenient if I'm ever in a situation where I wanna get a shot very quickly, but need to be in silent mode. Stealth mode. 
ninja mode. The second custom button is the AF on button, which basically acts as this button, which you hold halfway down for like focusing. So I never use it when it's here. It's just a bit pointless for me. So I changed this to IAF. So if I'm shooting portrait photography, wedding photography, anything with a face, I can basically just hold this button halfway down and it will look and track for an eye and just focus on an eye only. Our third custom button is the C1 button right here, which is normally assigned for white balance. Honestly, I hardly ever change my white balance whilst doing photography. It's most of the time in auto. And if it gets it wrong, I know with how good raw files are from Sony or any other camera that I'm able to push and pull and get them back to where I want to in post. So instead, I use this as an AF to MF toggle switch so basically if I wanted to quickly switch from auto focus to manual focus I just press the C1 button and now I'm in manual focus great if I'm in a situation like I was mentioned earlier where if I'm trying to shoot through a reflection and I see a subject but the camera's not focusing on it I can just quickly press this button get manual focus use peaking and nail my focus for custom button four and five which is the C3 button and the bin button I keep them how they have already programmed so the C3 one is for focusing mode and then the bin is for touch operation. Now going to the second set of rear buttons on the back of the camera, the first one we're going to change is this joystick one, which I have set to face eye subject select. So if I press it, I can switch from human IAF to animal to bird and then back to human again. This is really convenient if, say for example, you've got it as human, but then you want to take a photo of your family pet or something like that, you can quickly just switch it and then you're in the mode that prioritizes that kind of subject. The next button I'm going to change is the center one right here. Like with video, it's not normally set, but I have changed it to focus magnifier. So if I go into manual mode, double press this twice, I get a punch into my image to see where my focus is at. Now the left button is set to drive mode. With video, I have this left button set to peaking, but I like where drive mode is at with photography, so I keep that there. Like with video, I keep ISO on the right hand side with this right button, but with the uh, bottom button, that's not normally programmed, so I have put that on peaking, so I can go into peaking, go in manual focus, I see the peaking is working, and then I can go into focus magnification, and then I can see two levels of confirmation for when it comes to photography if my image is in focus. So the next two buttons are on top of the camera. We have the record button and the C2 button. The record button, I changed this to APS-C 35mm mode. So if I press it, it just crops into the image. Now this means I'm no longer shooting 33 megapixel raw. I'm shooting, I think, 15 megapixel with this camera. So I would recommend perhaps cropping in post but say in a pinch you do need that extra punch in for like one or two shots then it is convenient to have that right there and then my c2 button i keep this as focus area as standard because it's quick to access and i often change between wide and zone and sometimes expand spot they're the auto focusing modes i use most regularly but mainly wide and center wide and center and the final button to change is again, the custom button that you get with some lenses. Now for this one, I've actually programmed this one twice. So I've got it set to um, change the eye focus based on subject from human to animal to bird, as I do right here. Now the reason for that is it's a setting that I know I'll probably change, but I might not always have that button available. So it's good to have that as a backup somewhere else as a custom button for myself. You may choose to program this button differently, um, but there are a lot of different options you can use. But that is in general how I set up all the custom buttons for my camera when it comes to photography. The last thing we gotta look at is the function menu. I'll be honest, when it comes to the function menu, I haven't changed a great deal about it because I'm pretty happy of how it's set up. There's only a few minor adjustments and tweaks I've made here and there. One of them is face eye priority in autofocus. What I've got this set to is either on or off. Basically, say for example, there's a, there's a scene and there's a lot of people in it, but I don't want it to be focusing on anyone in particular. I can just turn this off and it will focus on the scene in general rather than trying to spot that one person on their own. What it's basically doing is saying to Sony's eye focus, calm down, we know you're amazing, we just don't need it in this scene. 
The next one is creative style and I've swapped this out for grid line type. Now for people interested, I do not change the creative style on my camera ever. It's on standard, always has been on standard for any Sony camera I've had because I'm always shooting raw. I can push and pull my images how I want them in post. Do other people play around with their creative style or do they have it like um, on standard like myself? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm interested to see if other people have different ways of working with that. And the final thing we're changing within the function menu is the image quality. As I said at the beginning of this video, I always shoot raw, uncompressed, so there's no point of having that in the function menu because it's something I'm never gonna change. So I'm gonna put in here instead grid line display so if i ever do want to see the rule of thirds on a uh, screen i can just turn them on and off like so and then if i want to change the type of grid line display i can change that here as well and that is how i set up the sony a7 IV in its entirety that felt like a really long video and i haven't even got to editing yet but before we end today's video, we've got to have a look for the hashtag CP photos and see what you guys are creating. Okay, so let's jump straight into the hashtag where we have surpassed 25,000 posts on the hashtag. That, that is insane. So many fantastic photographers, people from this community using it. I highly recommend and encourage other people to go and meet other photographers using the hashtag. Go and follow them work, go and speak to them. Just interact with this community more and let's just keep building it but that is madness 25,000 thank you all so much for continuing to use it and let's start right here with this banger bye it's leon simpson mate your work keeps getting featured because you are just taking it to next levels look at that is that double exposure i love the color grading love the concept it's that's awesome dude dude you've absolutely smashed that awesome oh this black and white shot right here by Leon from Iceland, a place I always want to visit and I will visit one day. I love these. Love this black and white series you got going on right here. Awesome framing here by Camera Lizard Photos. Absolutely smashed it. London Eye, awesome work right there. I love this silhouette shot by Dan. New York City, a place I also really want to go to and that looks awesome. Love the shot right there. Scroll down a little bit more. Um, I like, ooh, a nice bit of panning action here by uh, Ian. Real nice stuff right there. We've got this one by Eds. I like these, um, the free grid thing. I want to do this myself. Really cool series right here. Real nice shots. I like what you've done. Uh, ooh, look at this close-up by Surrounded underscore me. I, I, I don't even know. I presume that's just a dirty window. But with the boa behind and the color grading, it just looks awesome. You know, even subjects that normally look dirty with the right lighting and some good color grading just pop. And that is a perfect example of that. Let's go on to, down a bit more. Oh, I like this one by um, CY Campto. Real nice uh, London city street shots right here. I love the color grading, excellent work. And we'll have a look at a couple of more today. I know this video is gonna be extremely long. Is this a water? Oh no, it's a mountain. Why did I think that was water for a second? I had, my my brain didn't compute what that was. But lazy dot travel photography, well that certainly ain't lazy. That is next level, that is awesome. What a stunning place as well. And the last photograph we're gonna look at today is, oh, this reflection shot right here by XMPLES Studios. Really nice shots right there. I love that reflection shot. And I'd like to say, again, a massive thank you to everyone continuing to use the hashtag over on Instagram. And that is where I'm gonna be leaving today's probably longest YouTube video I have ever done. Hopefully this has been helpful to you guys who have just got the Sony a7 IV. If you've got any questions or anything like that, anything I've missed, let me know in the comment section below. But if this video has been helpful to you, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that kind of stuff would be deeply appreciated. But I don't wanna make this video any longer than it already is. So until next time, keep creating and I'll see you in the next one. Later.